So today we're talking about polygons. A polygon is a closed figure with line segments and vertices. So let's talk about that for a minute. We have what's called a line, and that goes on forever in both directions. We have a ray, which has one endpoint and goes on forever in one direction. And then we have a line segment that has two endpoints, and it stops at each endpoint. So a polygon is made up of line segments. And the line segments connect at the endpoints, and those endpoints are called vertices. So let's look at some examples here. See if you can figure out which one of these are polygons. Is a circle a polygon? No, it is not made up of line segments that connect. What about a parallelogram? Yep, it is made up of line segments that connect. What about a triangle? Nope, it is. I mean, yes, it is made up of line segments that connect. The next figure is just some random figure, and it's open right here. It doesn't connect like that. Therefore, this is not a polygon. So, nope, that's not a polygon. And then this next figure does not is not a closed figure. It's an open figure. An open figure means that all the line segments are not connecting to each other. A closed figure means they are. So this is an open figure, so it is not a polygon. So we have a lot of different types of polygons that we're going to study. These are the ones that you're expected to know. The smallest polygon is a three-sided polygon, and the largest is a 10-sided polygon or decagon. So let's go through and see if you can memorize all of these. You probably know a lot. Triangles are three-sided polygons. Quadrilaterals are four-sided polygons. Pentagons are five-sided polygons. Hexagons are six-sided polygons. Heptagons are seven-sided polygons. Octagons are eight-sided polygons. Nonagons are nine-sided polygons. And decagons are ten-sided polygons. Now we also have um, some special types of each of these polygons. And the types we're going to study are triangles and quadrilaterals. We're going to study some special types of triangles and quadrilaterals. So I want you to know all of these definitions. And now let's talk about some specific types of triangles. The first thing you need to understand about triangles is that their angles add up to 180 degrees. So for any triangle, if you add up all the angles, so let's say we had 30 degrees here and 70 degrees here, and this is not going to look to scale, and 80 degrees here, notice that that adds up to 180 degrees. All the angles have to add up to a total of 180 degrees for any triangle. So now let's look at how to classify our triangles. You can classify triangles by their sides. You can also classify them by their angles. We're going to start by classifying them by their sides. And you're probably familiar with these terms. Scaling triangles, a triangle that has no sides congruent. An isosceles triangle has two sides congruent. And an equilateral triangle has three sides congruent. Now, one of the cool things about knowing how many sides are congruent is you will also know how many angles are congruent. So with a scaling, since no sides are congruent, no angles are congruent. With an isosceles triangle, since two sides are congruent, two angles will be congruent. And with an equilateral triangle, since three angles or all the angles are congruent, I mean, since three sides are congruent, all three angles are congruent as well. Now, let's think about a couple things that this tells us. So first of all, if we know that 180 degrees is the total of all the angles of any triangle, and we know for an equilateral triangle that all the angles are congruent, or that means they have the same measure, then how much would each angle be? Well, let's divide 180 by 3. So each of the angles in an equilateral triangle is 60 degrees. And that will always hold true since they have to add up to be 180 degrees. So I want to get back to the isosceles triangle. So there's something special about an isosceles triangle. So with an isosceles triangle, we know that two sides are congruent 
and two angles are congruent. But since we have three angles, we have to know which two angles are congruent. So the two angles that are congruent are always going to be across from the sides that are congruent. So this is one way you can tell visually. Another way you can tell visually which sides are going to be, um, which angles are going to be congruent is based on the angle created by the two congruent sides. Okay, so here's a side that's congruent and here's the other side that's congruent. And the way I can tell is the tick marks. They both have one tick mark. All right, so they form this angle up here. That angle is not going to be congruent to the other two angles. So the angle formed by the two congruent sides is the angle that's not congruent. The angles at the bottom of the two congruent sides, although it's not always on the bottom, or the angles across from the two congruent sides are the angles that are congruent. So let's look at a triangle. So here's a triangle. So if I tell you, and this may not look to scale, but that's okay. If I tell you that this side and this side are congruent, and I'm showing you that with the same number of tick marks, can you determine which angles will be congruent? It should be this angle and this angle. And by the way, <clears throat> I'm using notation common in geometry. These little curves here are called arcs, and the number of arcs you have, if they're the same number in different angles, it lets you know those angles are congruent. So you can see up here, there's one arc here and one arc here. So those two angles are congruent. I have two arcs in this angle, which lets you know that's not equal to those with the one arc. So if I had one arc here and one arc here and two arcs at the top, I know that these two angles are congruent, but the one at the top is not congruent to those. So here we see in this triangle, right here, we see this angle and this angle are congruent because these are the angles that are across from the congruent sides. Or another way to think about it is these two sides right here that are congruent to each other form this angle, and that angle is not one of the congruent angles. So let's get back to our definitions. Scaling, no sides congruent, no angles congruent. Isosceles, two sides congruent, two angles congruent. Equilateral, three sides congruent, three angles congruent. And this is called classifying triangles by their sides. Now let's talk about classifying triangles by their angles. Okay, so keep in mind that <clears throat> all three angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So, a right triangle has one right angle. And how much does one right angle equal? 90 degrees, right? So, a right triangle equals 90 degrees. And then we have an obtuse triangle. It has one obtuse angle. And what does obtuse mean? Obtuse means between 90 and 180 degrees. So, we know that a right angle is 90 degrees. We know that an obtuse angle is between 90 and 180 degrees. 180 degrees is a straight line. And when we see the word between, that does not include 90 or 180. So this has to be slightly above 90 degrees or slightly less than 180 degrees to be an obtuse angle. And then we have an acute triangle. An acute triangle has all three angles acute. An acute angle is between what? Do you remember? It's between zero degrees and 90 degrees. So now let's think about what this information tells us. So if we have a right triangle, we know that we have one angle that's 90 degrees. 
Now we know that all the angles have to add up to equal 180 degrees. So that means we have 90 degrees left because of that right angle. We have 90 degrees left to split amongst these two smaller angles. And what that tells us is those two smaller angles must be acute. Okay, so we have two acute angles and one right angle and a right triangle. Now, an obtuse triangle is going to have an angle that's obtuse, which means it has to be bigger than 90 degrees. And that means if we take 180 minus bigger than 90 degrees, so we don't know how much bigger. It means we're going to have less than 90 degrees left to split amongst the two smaller angles. And what that tells us is that obtuse triangles also have two acute angles. So it'll have one obtuse angle and two acute angles. Now, an acute triangle has exactly three acute angles. All of the angles will be less than 90 degrees. Okay, so let's move on. So, so this is the end of your information on triangles.